Hey guys, let's take a look at our graphing systems of equations and solving by substitution quiz review. Ready? Let's take a look. Number one, true or false? If you solve a system by graphing and also by substitution, you will get the same solution. That is absolutely true. Solving by graphing and seeing where they intersect or solving by substitution is going to get you the same solution. Number two, if a system is consistent and independent, it means, well, consistent means there is a solution and independent means only one. So that would be that the system has one solution. If it said dependent, it would be infinitely many. If it said inconsistent, that's when it's no solution. Number three, if the equations of a system have the same slope but different y-intercepts, let me draw something maybe like that. Um, if the system has the same slope, all right, so let's say I start them both with y equal 3x, but different y-intercepts, so like minus 4 plus 2. Well, what do we know about equations that have the same slope? If they have the same slope, they are parallel. Parallel lines, do they ever intersect? No. So if they're parallel and they never intersect, the system would have no solution. Okay, number four, if the equations of a system when graphed form the exact same line, so two equations that are the exact same line. Now, if they're the exact same line, they overlap two equations, maybe different forms, same line. That means that every single point on one line matches up with every single point on the other line, and that's when it is infinitely many. Number five, if the equations of a system have different slopes, like let's say I had y equals 3x minus 4, and then y equals x plus 2. Totally different equations, different slopes. Well, if they're the same slope, they're parallel. If they're the same equation, they're the same line. If they're different slopes, then eventually they're just going to intersect at one point. And if they intersect at one point, that means the system has exactly one solution. Number six, given the system. So, oh, look, here's an example now. I'm looking at the system. I notice that this equation had, these equations have the same slope. They both have a slope of 1. They have different y-intercepts. So they're not the same equation, but they have the same slope. That means that they're parallel, and so the system has no solution. This next one, given the system, um, I mean, I could graph these, or I could say, hey, let me go ahead and take that first equation, x plus y equals 2, and put it in slope-intercept form. So if I rewrite that, it would be y equals negative x plus 2. And then the second equation is y equals 5x minus 3. Not the same equation, don't have the same slope, different slopes. They're going to intersect at exactly one point. Number 8, okay. Um, 4x plus y equals 6. And then I have y equals negative 4x plus 6. All right, well, if I take this first equation and I get y by itself, I rearrange it, I would subtract 4x, and I end up getting negative 4x plus 6. And what I'll notice is that the first equation is actually identical to the second equation. So if you have two equations for the exact same line, that's when it's infinitely many. Number nine, what is the solution to the system? So again, parallel lines. If I graph parallel lines, there is no solution. Easy. Number 10, oh, I have a pair of intersecting lines. Where they intersect, that's where the solution is. And so my intersection here is at negative 3, negative 5. I have a little typo here, so excuse me on that, but it should be negative 3, negative 5. Um, that's the coordinates for this ordered pair. That's easy. Number 11, what is the solution to this system? Now, if I only see one line, well, that must mean that the two equations overlapped each other, and I'm only seeing one line on my graph. I'm not missing a line, I promise. And so if that's the case, that's when it's infinitely many solutions. Number 12, what equation would have no solution with this equation? Y equals 3x minus 4. Well, no solution is when they're parallel. Parallel lines have the same slope. So I have to pick an equation that has the same slope. Well, since this equation has a slope of 3, I have to pick the same equation that has also a slope of 3, and it would be y equals 3x plus 5. Number 13, which equation would have infinitely many solutions with this equation? y equals 3x minus 4. Ooh, so infinitely many is when they're equations of the exact same line. So I have to figure out which equation is identical to that equation. Now, what I notice is that two of them are in slope-intercept form. And so the first one doesn't make any sense. The last one doesn't make any sense. But I want to know, hey, if I took this equation and I put it in standard form, would it match one of my other two options? 
So let's go ahead and do that. Y equals 3X minus 4. Now we know there's more than one way to put this in standard form. There's different strategies, but you're going to get the same answer. So for me, I might look at this and say, hey, I want to move my 3X to be on the same side as my Y. So let me go ahead and subtract 3X. I end up getting negative 3X plus Y equals negative 4. But the rule in standard form is A is not supposed to be negative. So if I go ahead and divide everything by negative 1, um, I end up with positive 3X minus Y equals positive 4. Do I have that? I do. And so that equation in slope-intercept form matches that equation in standard form. And if there are equations for the same line, it's infinitely many. All right, let's get into substitution now. So problem number 14. So the rest of the problems here on this review are substitution. Each one of these equations has a different scenario in it that we're going to be taking a look at. First one, y equals x plus 4 and y equals negative x plus 2. These problems are the best for substitution because if they're both set equal to y, if y is equal to x plus 4, then x plus 4 gets simply substituted in for y from the second equation. So everything that y is equal to is just x plus 4. So I would write x plus 4 equals, because that's what y equals, and then I just bring down the rest of my equation. I now have an easy equation to solve. I'm going to solve. I'm going to go ahead and add x on both sides get 2x plus 4 equals 2. Go ahead, subtract 4 on both sides. I end up getting 2x equals negative 2. So if 2x equals negative 2, then that means x equals negative 1. Um, I actually notice I only have one answer choice that even has that. But if I go further, I want to solve for y. I can take either one of those equations. I'm going to just grab the first one. I plug in my x value that I just solved for in for x. Negative 1 plus 4 is 3. And so my solution is negative 1, positive 3. Perfect. Number 15, solve this system by substitution. All right, so I have y equals 2x plus 4, and y equals negative 2x plus 4. So same idea that we end up having them both equal to y. So everything in the first equation that's set equal to y is going to get plugged in for y in the second equation. So I have 2x plus 4 equals negative 2x plus 4. I notice they have 4s on both sides. I'm just going to, um, I'll get rid of that in just a moment. But let's say I go ahead and add 2x. Oops. I end up getting 4x plus 4 equals 4. Subtract 4 on both sides, I end up getting 4x equals 0, which just means x equals 0. Again, I only have one answer choice where x is even 0, but if I was to go ahead and grab, let's say, the first equation and plug that x value in, y equals 2 times 0 plus 4. Well, 2 times 0 is 0, and 0 plus 4 is 4, so I know my answer is 0, 4. Number 16. Okay, so this one, this is always a good one too. This is a good kind of problem. 2x minus y equals 1, and then x equals 2. So by substitution, it's literally just telling me in the second equation that where I see x, my x value is 2. So I'm going to be plugging a 2 in for x into the first equation. So this would look like 2 times 2 minus y equals 1. This ends up becoming 4 minus y equals 1. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 4 on both sides. I get negative y equals negative 3. If I divide both sides by negative 1, I end up getting positive y equals positive 3. Okay, again, I only see one answer choice that even has that, and I'm actually done because, look, my x-coordinate was given to me 2. I just solved for my y-coordinate, so my solution is just 2, 3. Number 17. All right, number 17 says 3x plus y equals 4 and y equals negative 2x plus 1. So everything that y is equal to in the second equation is going to get plugged in for y into the first equation. So I would then have 3x plus, I'm not going to write y, I'm going to put in everything that y is equal to, which is negative 2x plus 1 equals 4. So now 3x minus 2x is just 1x, so this is 1x plus 1 equals 4. Subtract 1 on both sides, 
I end up getting x equals 3. And then, of course, to find my y, I'm going to take my y equals equation. That's the easiest way to do that. To solve for y is to take the y equals. And so it's y equals negative 2 times my x value of 3 plus 1. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. And so my solution is 3, negative 5. Excellent. Number 18. Number 18. So number 18 is 2x minus 3y equals 6, and then x plus y equals 3. Now in substitution, one of one or both of the equations has to be x equals or y equals. And I see in this equation, I don't have either. Both of these equations are not set equal to x or y, but I can force one of them to become that. And the easier equation in this case to get either x or y by itself would be the second equation. Because I see I could really easily get x by itself by subtracting y, or I can get y by itself by subtracting x. It would not matter. So for me, I'm going to look at the second equation, and I'm going to say, you know what? If I get x by itself, if I wanted to rewrite this and get x by itself, I would have to subtract my y. So x is equal to negative y plus 3. Could I have gotten my y by itself? Absolutely. I promise you your final answer would be the same. So now, since x is equal to negative y plus 3, that means where I see x in my other equation, I'm going to substitute in the whole value of negative y plus 3. So this becomes 2 times negative y plus 3 minus 3y equals 6. Let's go ahead and solve. We have negative 2y plus 6 minus 3y equals 6. Negative 2y minus 3y is negative 5y plus 6 equals 6. Subtract 6 on both sides. And if I get negative 5y equals 0, then I know y equals 0. After I solve for y, I would solve for x. The easiest way is to then use the equation that's already in x equals form. So I'm going to grab this equation here. x equals negative. My y value is 0. So that's silly. It's just x equals 3. My solution is always the x value and then the y value. So it's 3, 0. Number 19, another system where neither one of them is already set equal to x or y. So 6x minus y equals 2, and then 3x minus 2y equals 4. If you had to pick one of these equations to get either x or y by itself, it most likely is going to be the first equation. Um, if I wanted to start to get y by itself in this first equation, I would subtract 6x. Now if I subtract 6x, I'm going to be left with negative y equals negative 6x plus 2. But we don't want negative y, so we have to divide everything by negative 1, which means that it would be y equals positive 6x minus 2. Um, could I have added y and then subtracted 2 and rearranged it that way? Absolutely. So now, now I have y by itself, so y is equal to 6x minus 2. So this means where I see y in my other equation, I'm plugging in a 6x minus 2. So now this equation becomes 3x minus 2 times everything that y is equal to, 6x minus 2 equals 4. I'm going to go ahead and solve this. This ends up getting 3x minus 12x plus 4 equals 4. Uh, this is now negative 9x plus 4 equals 4. I guess when I made these problems, I was obsessed with getting 0. Who knows? I end up getting negative 9x equals 0, which means x equals 0. If x equals 0, I go ahead, I plug that back in um, to solve for y. So if I grab that y equals equation, y equals 6 times 0 minus 2. Well, 6 times 0 is just 0, and 0 minus 2 is negative 2. And so I have my solution of 0, negative 2. Last one, number 20. All right, number 20 is y equals negative 0.5x uh, minus 3. And then I have 4x minus y equals negative 6. I already have the first equation set equal to y, so that is great news for us. We just have to be a little extra careful on this one. So this one becomes 4x minus the entire value of y. So negative 0.5x minus 3 equals negative 6. And so what you can see is happening here, um, since we have to subtract y, we have to make sure that we subtract everything that y is. So when I do that, 
If I subtract negative 0.5x, that becomes positive 0.5x. If I subtract negative 3, that really becomes positive 3. So you have some sign changes there. 4.5 plus 0.5 is 4.5x plus 3 equals negative 6. Um, whoops. Subtract 3. I end up getting 4.5x equals negative 9. Divide both sides by 4.5. And hey, 4.5 is half of 9. And so if it's negative 9, I know x equals negative 2. Um, and then I need to solve for y. So I could just grab my y equals equation from up top. So if I grab that equation, y equals negative 0.5 times my x-coordinate of negative 2 minus 3. Well, half of 2 is 1, and a negative times a negative is a positive, so it's positive 1 minus 3. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And so my solution is negative 2, negative 2. Excellent. Awesome. The only skill that I did not go over in one of these equations is when it's no solution and infinitely many. So for example, ready? Um, if I gave us an equation of, uh, let's see, y equals 4x plus 5 and y equals 4x minus 2. Now, we already know these lines are parallel. There's going to be no solution. So look what happens if I did substitution. If I plugged in everything that was equal to y in the first equation into y in the second equation, I would be left with 4x plus 5 equals 4x minus 2. Now, look what's going to happen. The moment I subtract 4x on both sides, my variables are going to be completely gone. And if they're completely gone, I'm left with a statement that is not true. And because that's simply not true, that's when it would be no solution. So if you're solving by substitution and you get a not true statement, that's when it's uh, no solution rather. The other example would be if I gave you y equals, um, let me do a different one, negative 4x plus 3, and then I actually give you an equation that's identical, it's just in standard form, 4x plus y equals 3. And you're like, oh, I'm going to solve this by substitution, okay, everything that y is equal to, here, negative 4x plus 3, I'm going to plug in for y. So this equation would become 4x and then plus everything that y is equal to. So negative 4x plus 3 equals 3. And what we're going to notice in this special case is 4x minus 4x, gone. So again, your variables are gone. But when you are left with a true statement, that's when it's going to be infinitely many. Good luck on your quiz. Bye.